How does a photon greet another photon? It waves. <laughs> I love the baby and the dog. So we're going to talk about single slit diffraction. So what do we mean by single slit? We just mean there's one opening that the light is passing through. So we're going to consider that the light is passing through an aperture of size B, and very often we're going to be considering just circular apertures, and it's going to be projected onto a screen that's got a distance R away. Now this light is going to produce a very specific pattern, and I want to show you what it's going to do. That's because the light, again, is going to be um, interfering with each other uh, in constructive and destructive ways, and it's going to end up making this kind of pattern here. So if I tried to draw it, like if we would see this, we would just see like a really bright sort of dot right here in the center, maybe like this, so like really, really bright and quite wide. Now after that, we'd see like slightly less bright ones here, and maybe slightly less bright ones here like this. And what's going to happen is this, we're going to have this angle theta, which uh, maybe I'll draw it uh, in green maybe. We're going to have this angle theta right here, which is to the first minimum. So if I go like this right here, this right here, angle theta. So this, if you notice, if theta is zero uh, radians here, if it's, by the way, theta is going to be in radians. Um, this angle right here, if it's zero radians, then we're right in the center, so it's going to be really, really bright. And what's going to happen is this angle right here, it can be anything, but we're going to define this theta, at least in this equation, we're going to have a special equation that goes like this, theta equals lambda over b. So we're going to be defining this theta. This angle is actually going to be very, very special. It's going to be the angle where we have a first minimum. Now let me explain what I mean here. So if I center this thing right here around theta, and here theta is zero. Well, at zero, that's right here where it's a maximum intensity. I can go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right of it, and I'm going to be, uh, you know, really bright. So it's going to go something, whoops, something like this. So it's going to be some kind of curve goes something like this, and then maybe like this right here. This will be like the, at least the first two one, like this, so like this, maybe like that. Keep in mind, by the way, it keeps going, it keeps going. So, you know, there's like little bumps here like this, of course. But the key thing is this angle theta right here is going to be from here to here. This is going to be theta. That's going to be the angle to the first minimum. Because see this point right here? That's the first, that's the first time when I have a minimum. Right, where this intensity goes down to zero. So that's where there's destructive interference. In the center, by the way, there's constructive interference. So what I think is really important to consider then is the fact that this angle right here is inversely proportional to B. In other words, if I make B larger, I'm going to make this angle smaller. If I make B smaller, I'm going to make this angle bigger. So what's important here is that, you know, well, you know, this uh, equation here, theta equals lambda over b, what does that do? It tells you the angle, of course, where the first minimum appears. That's the first really important thing you need to know. There's a piece of this that is so important for you to understand. Okay, this one right here, I could not stress this enough. This is super, super important here. Okay, this is exclamation marks everywhere here. What we're doing here is this is just the angle where we find the first minimum. But what if you want the actual distance I mean, this is just an angle, right? So if you look at this right here, we just found this angle theta that gives us this. But what if we want to actually project this? So in other words, you know, what if we want to actually go like this right here? This is like a little piece of a circle, technically. This right here is uh, theta. Remember, this only works if theta is in radians, which, by the way, it is. This is really important is that this is in radians. There is an equation that defines arc length uh, with the radius here, and it goes like this. L equals R theta. I think you should memorize this. This right here, you should actually learn this. This is helpful in mathematics, depending on which math class you take, but this right here is a really important one. So this tells you, hey, if your angle is in radians, okay, so that's only if your angle right here is in radians, then you can use this arc length formula. And the reason why we do this is because now we can find an actual distance. See, we're here, if we just use this calculation here, we would calculate the angle, sure. If I want to know, hey, what's this actual distance right here? Well, that's when I can just use L equals R theta, right? So I can just solve for L here, because I know R. This is because this is a, this is a piece actually from the arc length uh, formula from mathematics, for example. So if you're doing arc length, this is actually the arc length formula from math. There we go. I like this one here. Fiber optics cat is experiencing total internal reflection. Maybe he's considering his life choices. <laughs> so we've got light that's passing through a single slit. So let me just try to draw it here. Here we go. And my single slit here, it has a slit width of 0.59. So that's B, by the way. And that distance right here, this is 0 0.59. And remember, these are centimeters. 
Okay, well, that light is being projected onto a screen now. Uh, that is over here. Oh, and we're told this distance is 3.5 meters. So maybe I'll measure that right here. I'll write it down. That's 3.5 meters. Okay, and that, by the way, is going to be what I'm going to call R. And what's going to happen is it's going to create this airy pattern. Remember, we were talking about this before. So it's going to make this, if this here is zero, and this is like zero radians, or this is like the zero point, like the straight across, it's going to be making, remember, like this bright spot in the middle, and then, you know, a dark spot in over here, and after that, a brighter spot again, but a little bit less intense, and so on. In other words, we've got this, this angle right here that we can define right here, this right here, that would be theta. That's the angle for the first minimum. But now the question is, what's the width of the central maximum? Well, let's first of all project this thing like we did before right here. Let's project it completely onto its side, just so it's easier to look at. So this here is theta, which is in radians. Remember, we've got this intensity here, and we've got this airy pattern, this, this pretty pattern here that goes like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. And what are we looking for? Well, we've got an equation that's going to tell us, so theta is going to tell us lambda over b. Or theta is going to tell us what is that angle for the first minimum. In other words, what is this? That's how we define this thing, because that's the first minimum right here, All right, just like we've done before. Okay, so if we do that, then we can actually calculate this. We can figure this out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll figure out theta then. So theta equals, let's see, it's going to be, and remember, this is for the first minimum. That's going to be theta equals lambda, which is 633 nanometers, so 633 times 10 to the minus 9, because that's a nanometer. All that over uh, b, which is 0 0.59, Watch out, they're centimeters, so it's times 10 to the minus 2. Let me do that on my calculator. Okay, so I'll just do a nice fraction here. Whoops, I don't do that. I do this one. And I'm going to say, again, 633 times 10 to the minus 9. All that over, what was it? 0.59 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, so I get this answer of 1.07288 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, don't forget, what are these units? These are radians. We've just found this. Now, we're not done. I just want to point out, like, we've just found the angle for the first minimum. But we don't want that. We're asked for the width of the central maximum. That is, we want this entire width right here. Okay, so let me just do a little drawing maybe just to make sure this is super, super clear. So what we actually want to find now, we found the angle, sure, but we're actually now looking for, we want to know this distance right here, this to here. I want this whole distance right here. That's what we actually want. Now we found this little piece right here. So if you notice, if we, I can take that angle there and get that as a distance, if I did that distance times 2, then I would get my answer. So maybe I'll call this width right here, maybe I'll call it W, like that's going to be the width here. So let's actually start by projecting this thing right here. So I'm going to um, find this, this answer right here. So I'm looking for, if I look at this one right here, I'm going to be looking for this section right here like this right here, where it goes up like this right here, where this right here is R, this is L, and this right here is theta. I'm going to find this length, and of course I'm going to do that times 2 to get W. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to use that equation, uh, L equals R theta. That's the one right here that I had to memorize, remember? This one here. That's the one you should memorize. And let's go ahead and use it. So that means my uh, arc length is going to be r, which is 3.5 meters. All that times my theta, which is this uh, number 1.07288 times 10 to the minus 4 radians, of course. So let me just do that on my calculator. I'll take my answer from before and just multiply it by 3.5. So now I have an answer of uh, 3.755 times 10 to the minus 4. Now this is important, but I'm still not done yet. This is my length. That's actually the length right here, this first one right here. But if I want to know W, remember what I'm going to do then, I'm going to say, well, W is going to be equal to 2 times my length. 
right? So I'm going to need to know, you know, what my length was here. So that means, I hope that makes sense it's because I just found this piece right here, just like, you know, the this distance from the center to the end. But I want to know the entire width, so I have to do that times 2. That's going to be an important piece right here. So that means it's just going to be 2 times my answer right here, and I'll just do that on my calculator because uh, I, it keeps all the decimals. Remember, don't use rounded answers when you're doing calculations. You always want to keep all the decimals. So let's see what that gives me. I'm just going to do this answer right here and just say that times 2. All right, so I got 7.510, let's say, times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Okay, so um, I can just take that, then just do it to, let's see, to two significant figures. So I'll say the width of the central maximum then is just going to be 7.5, let's say. So 7.5 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. It's very small, but that's okay. It should be. Now, what I wanted to show you, I thought it would also be interesting to show you um, uh, an animation. Uh, so let me show you that right here. So this is on PHET with wave interference. Remember we were just talking before about how um, that equation shows that this right here, by the way, is going to be the slit uh, width or the opening, the aperture size. This here is going to be the airy pattern that you're going to get. Now, keep in mind, this one is in 3D. I've just been showing you like a, a, a cut, you know, a cutaway of it. So like if you went from left to right here, then I've been showing you that, that would be the center, for example. Notice here is the first minimum. So if we look at this right here, if B, for example, is really small, Remember this equation, let me just remind you here. The equation goes like this, right? If B is really, really small, then theta should be big. In other words, this angle for the first minimum should be bigger. So if I make B smaller, theta should get bigger. If I make B bigger, theta should get smaller. Let's see if that's the case. So I'm gonna, so watch carefully. As I make the diameter of this thing here get bigger, we should expect this distance right here to get smaller. Let's see if it does. Let me make it bigger, and do you notice, and as I'm making it bigger, do you notice that now this distance now has been shrinking? So this just shows, like, you know, visually at least, what this airy pattern would look like. This is, like I said, it's a circular one, of course, because we're going all the way around. Whereas in my uh, diagrams here, I've just been showing the, you know, just one cut of it. But, you know, if you look at it here, it is really uh, bright in the center, and it gets dark and then bright again. But there we go.